Sometimes I have to work, but I also have to take part in the revolution. I protest while working on my farm. I didn't know what would happen, but I didn't expect this. I was simply protesting. I was unarmed. These are the voices of some brave people in Zagai region who are continuing to stage peaceful protests. This is despite heavy conflict in the region, huge numbers displaced, and four times more houses destroyed than the rest of the country combined. Hello and welcome to Doa Than, a weekly podcast that brings you human rights stories from Myanmar. It's brought to you by Fondacion Hirondel. This episode is produced by a journalist from Frontier Myanmar. Names may have been changed to protect contributors. May 26th, on the east side of Yinmabin Township in Zagain Division. Almost a thousand people rallied to show their opposition to the military regime. Demonstrations of this size are rarely seen in news reports anymore, after years of repression and crackdowns by the junta which seized power in a military coup in February 2021. This was a special rally to mark the 800th consecutive such protest by a multi-village alliance from Yinmabin and Salinji townships. People from 10 villages attended, including school-aged children and senior citizens. Dorhlahla, a woman in her 40s, was among the crowd. She's been actively involved in almost every protest since the coup, despite her need to earn a living. Politics is in a bad state, and people are facing hardships to survive. Sometimes I have to work, but I also have to take part in the revolution. I protest while working on my farm. If I can join the multi-village protests or other protest groups, I still want to protest while working my farm, and I invite protest groups to join me there. Some of Dohlala's family also join the protests when they're free. One of her five children, her middle son, is a member of a local People's Defence Force, or PDF. Since she cannot take up arms, she sees participating in protests as a form of revolution against the military regime. They are simply a group of dictators who ignore the people, but we refuse to accept a government that we do not admire. That's why we will fiercely rebel until this dictatorship falls. When we feel weary, we will take a break, but then we will rebel again. Some people may not be aware of the ground reality, but we have witnessed the torture and murder of many people. We cannot accept or recognize the military council. Normally, the protests are much smaller than this one, with perhaps a few dozen turning up. Villagers take it in turns to host a demonstration, and people from other villages travel to join if they can. There used to be 20 villages in the alliance. Now, most protesters come from just 10 villages. But it's still remarkable that the demonstrations persist. In the two or so years following the coup, Zagain Division has suffered from some of the most intense aerial and ground attacks by the Myanmar military. And there's been fierce resistance from local PDFs. As a result, looking at the total number of displaced people across the country, you'll find over half are in Zagain region alone. The UN says 760,000 people in Zagain region are displaced. ISP Myanmar puts it at over 1.3 million. One protest leader, Go Huan Thu, said that for these and other reasons, it can be difficult to keep motivating people to turn up to demonstrations. The main challenge lies in the decreased participation in the protests. This is primarily due to the enemy's torture, repression, and hardships faced in livelihoods. Another factor is the timing of the protests. Most protests take place in the morning, when people go to work on their farms. Additionally, some armed revolutionaries have prohibited people from participating in the protests. Apparently there was opposition to the demonstrations from some people's defence forces when they were just starting up, as fighters felt the time for protests was over. 
Since then, there have been times when PDFs in various states and regions have accompanied rural protesters for their protection. A spokesperson for the North Yama PDF sees their roles as being separate but complementary. We welcome and acknowledge these protests as they represent people's opposition to the military. We are separate from them. Our role is solely to carry out military operations. It would be dangerous for the people if we were to escort the protesting individuals. However, we are ready to escort them if they need it. While rural protests are still possible, it's become increasingly difficult to stage any kind of demonstrations in urban areas. The military regime has been quick to crack down on flash protests and arrest those involved. And yet, even in the cities, demonstrations are still happening. The Galay Town Protest Group was formed very soon after the coup on 7th of February 2021 by the Galay Student Union and other civil society organisations. Despite the dangers, the group has organized over 800 protests since then. Like the Yinminbin Salinji villagers, this group takes pictures and videos of the protests and posts these on their social media pages. One of the leaders, 22-year-old Gobaikpu, says they protest partly in order to encourage the resistance. <laughs> The reason why the Kali protest is held daily is to show their solidarity with the CDMRs and people's soldiers. They hear that it's encouraging for the soldiers fighting in the jungle to see the ongoing protests. The second reason is to demonstrate that people from all over the country, not just the Kali protest group, are opposed to dictators and cannot upset their dictators. Dictatorships, that's why they continue to protest day by day. But these protesters are taking great risks. Four of this group were arrested after a Thinjan demonstration this year, which lasted less than a minute. Ma Piu Piu was the only one who got away. <laughs> When we arrived at our gathering place around 12.15, we were preparing for a photo shoot. Suddenly, a military patrol vehicle appeared and started chasing us. We ran, but the vehicle didn't even stop. They shouted, catch them. I ran, leaving my laundry and pot behind. Some protesters were arrested with the pots. However, Mapupu did not escape punishment. Unable to arrest her, the military council just demolished her house. I didn't know what would happen, but I didn't expect this. I was simply protesting. I was unarmed. They got some of us, but I didn't expect them to bulldoze the house of someone they couldn't arrest. I thought they would just seal off my house or leave letters on it. My parents built this house. It's a bitter pill to swallow. Mapupu believes the military did this as a warning to show others what would happen if they dared to rebel against the authorities. All of these demonstrators are simply exercising their right to freedom of expression, one of the most basic human rights. However, under the military dictatorship in Myanmar, this is heavily restricted. And Mani Mang from Human Rights Watch warned that the situation will only worsen if Myanmar people stop these protests or stop speaking out. If people don't speak about what is happening to them, then we can't help them. We can't do anything. Um, Right now, I am solely reliant on the information that I receive from people who are experiencing this. If Myanmar people stop talking about it, I don't have any information to advocate for it either. Mapupu, who had never shown any interest in politics before, told Doa Than why she won't give up. I want people to know that I am rebelling against the military dictator. I want you to hear our voices. I want the next generation to have a better life. I don't have a spare life. If they kill me, I will die. But I don't care about death.
We hope you enjoyed this edition of Do Athan. You can listen to our podcast via the Do Athan Facebook page. It can also be found on SoundCloud, YouTube and iTunes. You can also listen every Saturday night from 9 to 10 p.m. and Sunday morning from 6 to 7 a.m. on Voice of America Radio. The project to support human rights reporting is delivered by Fondation Hirondel and it's made with the support of our donors. 